Thank you everyone for joining us today for this presentation, the IEC QI tool, a facilities QI solution. I'm Maria Costello and I'm the Director of Accreditation for Nuclear Pet for the IAC. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to describe the measures of quality improvement, explain how to use the quality improvement tool and discuss how to incorporate the findings into the meeting minutes. The IAC QI program requirements is that you must include at least one measure from each of the following four areas, test appropriateness or appropriate use criteria, technical quality review, interpretive quality review, and final report completeness and timeliness. In addition to completing those requirements, you need to review and maintain minutes or reports of the QI evaluations and document any corrective measures that are taken. You are required to have two QI meetings a year, and you must have you must discuss these measures at at least one of the two meetings. So at the IAC, we have a solution that will make completing these measures easier. It's the QI self-assessment tool. It helps you to review and evaluate your images and reports. It provides a data-driven objective measure of QI progress. It creates a quantitative report that identifies opportunities for process improvement. It also satisfies other quality initiatives such as MOC or maintenance of certification, and you can benchmark your findings internally. You're not required to use this, but if you do use it, you will meet all of the QI requirements listed in the IAC standards. There's no need to do separate projects for each measure, and you can also use this tool to evaluate the cases that you will submit for reaccreditation to see if they include all of the requirements. So the purpose of the quality improvement self-assessment tool is to educate on how to perform self-assessment or peer review of your cases. You can recognize deficiencies that maybe you wouldn't necessarily see, and you would it will help you to implement a corrective action process or process improvement when deficiencies are identified. This quality improvement self-assessment tool is incorporated into the online application. So if you already have an online account with us, which if you are an accredited facility, you should. Um, it's incorporated right into your account. There are three parts. First, you have to select the cases that you want to review. And when you select the cases, you can select as many as you would like. Then you will have to review the cases. And reviewing the cases, you can assign them to different technologists and physicians within your facility. And then the third part is the assessment. Um, and a summary report is generated for the assessment. So as I mentioned, you would log into your online account. You would click on the quality improvement tab. Once you click on the quality improvement tab, there will be a how and why tutorial video that you can um, review. Once you've reviewed the video, that's when you'll begin. The first thing you're gonna do is create a new assessment. Um, the ass an assessment is just a grouping of case studies. So you can pick you have to have at least one and you can have up to 20. And it's really your choice as to how many you pick. You will enter those cases into the tool. Um, you want to make sure that you enter the patient name, the exam date, the case type. You can also select, if you have a multiple site facility, you can select which site the, the study was performed at and select who interpreted the study. Once you're done, um, once you're done entering all the cases, then you will assign reviewers to those cases. Each case in an assessment can be assigned to multiple reviewers, which allows for peer review. So you don't think that you have to have separate cases for each reviewer you have. The more people you have reviewing the same case, the better your results will be. And if it's a combination of technologists and physicians, that is um, even better, it, and with the physicians, it gives you that intra and inter-observer variability. So to um, select the reviewers, you have to make sure that each of those people have verified whether they're technologists or physicians, that they've verified their email address, 
Once they've verified their email address, then they can be selected as a reviewer on a case. Once you have assigned all of the staff members, they will be available for review. Each staff member that was assigned will get an email notifying them that they have been assigned and they can click on a link in the email to access the review or they can log into the online account the same way that you do and just enter their login information. Next, they will review the cases by looking at the reports and the images. In the review, a series of questions will be answered on test appropriateness, technical quality review, interpretive quality review, and final report completeness and timeliness. This would obviously complete the four required QI measures. After all of the assigned reviews have been completed, a summary report of the review will be generated. And you can view that report by clicking on the view report button. A summary report will include whether the questions were answered right or wrong. And by wrong, it means you may not be meeting the standards, so you'll want to go back and review the standards. If multiple reviewers were assigned to a case, the report will also demonstrate if they have answered all of the questions the same or if there were discrepant answers. Those discrepant answers would lead to talking points for your QI meeting. At the end of each case, you will find an average quality store score and a st staff agreement score. At the end of the overall report, you will find a graph which has the average quality score for each measure. This summary report is what you are going to discuss at your QI meeting minutes. We do have templates for the QI meeting minutes, which can be found under the sample documents on our website. Your QI meeting minutes will include what you found for each measure, and you should mention how many studies were reviewed and what was found, and not just put that there was 100% agreement if that's what you found. So to review a little bit of what the content of the minute should be, what are you going to do with the data? Well, were there any discrepant answers between reviewers? Were there any wrong answers? What are you going to do to correct it? Um, and as I mentioned, you will discuss these results in your QI meeting, and you're going to document them in the QI meeting minutes. So first, you're going to identify the issue and determine what's needed to fix it. Was it um, in test appropriateness? Was it under the technical quality, interpretive quality, or final report completeness and timeliness measure? Um, it could have been, there could have been issues in multiple measures. Um, you're just going to want to assess one issue at a time because sometimes when you fix one thing, it leads to the correction of others. The next thing that you want to determine is who is part of the working group. In other words, who is going to be responsible to help to implement these changes that you need to make or, or identify how to fix them. Is it physicians? Is it technologists? Are there other staff members? You know, if there's an interpretation issue, obviously it's going to be the physicians. If there's some sort of issue that you found um, with all of the images, if there was motion or if there was artifact, what are you going to do to correct it? Um, you know, if there was something that happened because of the um, instructions that were given by the people that schedule the test, obviously then other staff are gonna to need to be involved to make the changes. You wanna clearly define what the problem is. What is it that you really wanna improve and what was the source of the problem? And again, you should only try to correct one thing at a time. The one thing that you correct may end up fixing another issue. The next thing that you will do is you're going to act or you're going to describe the change that will take place and the time frame for that change. Um, so what is that corrective action that you're going to put into place? Maybe you're going to make sure if there's a lot of motion that you found on the studies, you're going to make sure to tell a patient that they have to hold very still um, or make them more comfortable by putting a cushion underneath their knees because maybe they're moving around because their back hurt or something like that. Um, and then the time frame that you're going to see if that change went into effect. So, you know, are you going to reassess in three months and six months? That's up for you to, you to decide. 
Um, <clears throat> and then you want to test the change. So was the corrective action effective or do you need to start over? Basically data is what's going to measure whether the change was due to chance or not. So you want to make sure that you look at it for a long enough period of time that you can assess that, okay, it did help overall. Um, you don't want to make it too short of a time frame that it's like, okay, yep, we fixed it. So now we don't have to look at it again. You want to keep looking at that to make sure that that change has stayed in place. Once you check, you want to decide whether you need to do something else or reconsider whether you're going to maintain or extend the process improvement. Quality can be improved by looking at the work performed, how it's done, and how it can be done better. So you want to make sure that you keep looking at for these little issues and um, correcting them and making sure that correction stays in place so that it's not just a temporary fix and everything goes back to the way it was after a few months. The other um, benefit to the QI tool is that you can um, get analytics. So you can generate a report based on the, Q the usage of the tool, the case quality, the staff agreement, um, and you can do it for all of the measures um, or you can select which QI measure you want. You can also create a report based on the site. So when you enter the cases in, this is why it's important if you have a multiple site facility, to identify which site the case came from because you can see whether a particular issue is happening only at a certain site or um, if it's happening across all sites. It, this report will help you to determine where that education needs to be in place. So pretty much the QI tool really will help your facility to identify any quality improvement um, issues and ways that you can continuously improve your facility. What it does is it helps you to identify those little issues that you may not see on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. I just wanna thank everyone for joining us today. Um, you can contact any one of us at the IAC staff, myself, um, you can contact me by email or phone, Tom Roy or John Lilly. We are happy to answer any questions. John Lilly will be available after this presentation for live questions. So feel free to just ask any questions you have or call us anytime with any questions. Thank you again for joining me today.